Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on an Ever After High doll and making her to look like Buffy the Vampire Slayer in her lavender prom dress. This is for a recent commission. In this video, the first 10 minutes will be showing the face up, and also I will also be showing you the hairstyle and a little bit of the costume later on. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm a full-time artist based in North Carolina, and I specialize in custom dolls. I have been sharing my artwork on social media since 2012, and in my videos I mainly share the process of creating my one-of-a-kind dolls and offer tips and tricks along the way to help others who may want to learn to create their own dolls or develop their own style. So I started out with this doll by rooting her with some soft alpaca yarn which I had treated with by thinning and brushing out the excess, and then I wrapped that with some plastic and some pins to make sure that the particles from the the pencils or erasing and pastels doesn't get in the hair while I'm working. And then I gave her about four coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Flat, uh, UV Cut Flat before starting. I always start out by shaping the eyes with white. I find that if I add a base coat of white that the color that I add on the eyes pops a little bit better. And I'm working on a craft mat. I think it's called the world's best craft mat. The link to that and all of the supplies that I'm using are in the description box below along with affiliate links. So I'm just working on getting the eyes symmetrical. And recently I've been using this Prismacolor watercolor pencil for my black. It, it maintains its sharpness pretty well, so I've been using that quite a bit. But I've recently got a, uh, a gift for Christmas of my Faber-Castells, so I'll be using those in the in some future videos for the tight line work because that's my favorite the favorite Faber Castell aqua or art grip it works very well so thank you Renee <laughs> so I'm blending out some white that I added to the forehead nose chin and high high cheekbones just to maintain some highlights and then I'll add in the contouring in the eyes the client that I was working with wanted a uh, sort of sad look, so I added some dark, some more dark shading on the inner eyelids. So when I feel that some of my line work or uh, shading has gotten a little bit too dark. I'll go back with some colorless blender and a q-tip to blend that out a little bit better That's the pan pastel colorless blender. I've been asked if uh, Where to find the colorless blender, but I believe um, you can get that on dickblick.com or uh, Cheap Joe's art supply or Jerry's Artorama. I think all of them carry the pastel or the colorless blender for pan pastel I haven't seen it on Amazon, but there are some links in the description box below with some links to where you can get the sets that also include that, I believe. So as you can see, I'm using a reference photo from the TV show. This is the Sarah Michelle Gellar, Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show. And I guess there was an episode where she wore this lavender prom dress. And her, the lips that, the lipstick that she had on was like a shimmery kind of lavender to match the dress, I guess. So I gave her some um, sort of a pinky lavender lipstick and then I later on uh, sealed it with some pearlescent. I believe it's by Dream Coat. It's a pearlescent uh, top coat sealer. So I'm not sure if I show that, but that's what I did later on. So 
So I'm using this eyeshadow brush to add on the blush. It's one of my favorite tools to use to add blush on because it's super soft. And it's just kind of a mini version of what I would use for my own blush. So adding a little bit of shading in a darker color to the creases of the eyelids. And just making those a little bit darker towards the inner eye. So if you're interested in a commission, please feel free to email me or contact me on social media. The links are in the description box below. And my commissions will be closed for February while I complete the project that I'm working on, the collection for the Mad Monster Party convention in Charlotte. But I can add you to the waitlist if you would like. This is the third Buffy the Vampire Slayer commission that I've completed, and sometimes when I create a character I get contacted with requests for the same doll, but my dolls are one of a kind, so if I recreate a character it has to be a different version. So it's possible that I may do another Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but it would have to be a different version than the three that I have done. The first one was a black dress, and then the second was the red pants and black top with a leather jacket. And then there's this prom dress one. So I'm currently working on my Mad Monster Party collection, like I mentioned, so I'll have some monster-themed dolls coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. And let me know in the comment section below if there's any parts of the process that I'm not showing that you would like to see. Uh, I'll be happy to try to share whatever I can. I just try to keep my videos not too long. Uh, this one's about 15 minutes, so I like to keep it just around that, that. But if you'd like longer videos with more information, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. So while I've been posting on YouTube for a few years, I'm shifting a little bit more of my focus to YouTube this year, as most of my focus is usually on the dolls themselves and, and getting the work done. But uh, I'm trying to do a little bit more YouTube to share a little bit better. It's one of my goals for this year. So also if you're interested in seeing more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or DeviantArt, and the links to those are in the description box below. I'm just working on the eyebrows here and just making sure I'm giving it that sad look that the customer has requested. And then the last thing I do is the eyes. Here I'm giving her green eyes. And when I work on the color of an eye, I usually use about three or four different colors and blend those in. I'm working on the outer part of the eye as a darker shade and then blending it towards the center with, I'll go back with some white to do some blending. And here I'm just adding another shade of green. And here I tried to use the um, ink tents, Derwent ink tents. I don't use them very often. I have a set and um, I, th I think I've seen some other face-up artists use them, but they don't work very well for me. It just seems like I can't get them to blend as well as the other pencils, so I just stick to my others. I use the Derwent Metallics, which are also kind of like an ink tense, and they really work well to add a pop of color. You just have to be cautious about what kind of color they turn out to be after you've sealed it and kind of do some testing because the adding after adding the sealant the color changes on those I've noticed so I mainly use Derwent watercolor pencils 
and I use pan pastels. I sometimes, the pan pastels that I have don't have a very wide range of color, so sometimes I'll do custom mixes. And then I also have um, some sets of Schmincke and Sennelier and uh, Rembrandt past soft pastels that I'll sometimes alternate with those if I need a particular color. I also have a set of Derwent soft pastels that work pretty well as also. But my main go-to has been Pan Pastel for the past couple years. There I'm using a uh, Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil. It's one of the, it's not the Museum Aquarelle, I can't remember the name of these, Super Color, I think. And um, they're really good for, they, they keep a nice sharp point. If you're, some of them, it seems like the pencils that keep the nice sharp point don't do very well with adding like um, washes of color, but uh, they do well on like eyelashes and things like that. And then the softer pencils that may not keep a good point like the Derwent's, but the ones that don't keep that much of a, a sharp point like the Derwent pencils, um, they do really add a lot of great color. So on to the hair. So here I've kind of separated out her hair and added a bit of styling gel. Just kind of put it on the palm of my hand, rubbed my hands together and rubbed it through the hair. And then I just kind of separated it into little sections so I can more easily use my tiny flat iron to flatten the hair or uh, straighten the hair. So I'm just going through the entire head and then you can see here it makes it nice, nice and and soft and thin. This is actually after going through uh, several times with uh, brushing and uh, using some thinning shears as well. And then once I flat iron her, she has this nice soft natural look. I like to use the alpaca yarn mainly because it has that, uh, the, the hair like fineness is more in scale to the doll to make it look more realistic in my opinion. And then if you use like the saran hair or doll hair, it just, it earned like nylon. I just think that this gives it a bit of a more natural look. It is a little bit difficult to work with in that um, you have to do so much treatment to it to get it to uh, not shed. And then, <clears throat> And it's uh, a little fluffy, so you have to do a lot of thinning. Sorry for my voice today. I have a bit of a cold and I'm coughing. So I keep having to pause. I apologize. So I'm using some a razor to do some razor cutting around her sort of like long bang. And there she is. So her costume, I used this lavender uh, fabric that um, was uh, selected by the customer I was working with. And I just made like a tube dress and then did some custom stitching in the back to make it a little tighter around the waist to give the same look as the, the character. And there's how it looked out. I made a little polymer clay uh, brooch for the front and also over her hair and a little ring and earring as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also make sure to check out what's in my shop in my Etsy shop. The link is in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.